Welcome to Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. I'm Paula Eddy Wilcox, and I'm delighted to join you for a Game of Leadership podcast special. What are we going to be talking about today? Well, that's that's for us to know and for you to find out. So I look forward to hearing what you think on the other side. Hi, I'm Paula Eddie Wilcox and welcome to this special of Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. I'm delighted to connect with you all again today. And um, I'm asking the question of what has purpose got to do with leadership? Well, I have to say, in my humble opinion, a massive amount to do with leadership. I remember connecting with my purpose and the difference that it's made to me. But let me ask you a question first of all. What's purpose mean to you? Do you have one? Funny question to ask, isn't it? But I think, you know, a lot of us go through life saying, oh, yeah, I've got a purpose. And I know that I originally thought mine was was helping others. I loved to help others and serve others. You know, I'd always been in in roles where um, many of them were in the service industry, things like that. Um, And it it made a a difference to me. It made me happy to help others and bring others joy. And I believe we all have a purpose inside us, of course. You may not have connected with it yet, though. And um, hopefully today might help you get started with that journey. It benefits us personally and professionally. And as we know, um, obviously, I'm coming at this from a a leadership coach perspective. So I'm thinking about leadership in a professional context. But we lead ourselves in our lives too. And um, personal and professional are very often interlinked. And, um, you know, one doesn't go without the other, if that makes sense. So being able to connect the two really can make a big, big difference for you and your leadership. Now, there's a few things in life that are black and white. Um, I know that I I find it frustrating sometimes when I come across somebody that's, it must be done this way. <clears throat> there's no way, <clears throat> excuse me, opportunity to do it another way. Um, and it, it I find that frustrating because um, I like to come at life with what I call a growth mindset. And um, if you've ever heard me speak about that before, fixed versus growth mindset, if you like. And I often refer to the the work of Carol Dweck. And I saw a great TED talk of hers the other day where she was just talking about the two um, openly, a 10 minute slot. And um, the research that she did is fascinating. And um, it helps me understand that for me anyway, in my perspective, with my lens on the world, if you like, um, I like to think that uh, there's quite a bit of grey in between. That doesn't mean that decisions become much more difficult because of that. Um, actually, I like to think it, uh, it massively informs what I'm doing and helps me um, learn from things that didn't work the first time. So I take those learnings and apply a different approach next time, which means I might succeed. So, yeah, I didn't know that that was going to come up today in in my thought process as I was chatting to you. You know, just things like um, the pictures, the psychology pictures, you know, the one with the the ladies in the picture. We both look at it. You think there's an old lady. I think there's a young lady. But actually, some people can see both. But it's which one, you know, pops into your mind first. Now, I'm no psychologist, but I think, um, you know, we we get the idea. We have these different perspectives, different lenses on the world coming into play. So what could connecting with your purpose do for you? I want to tell you what it did for me first, because that might help you, you know, bring it to life a little bit. Um, quite a number of years ago now, I was in corporate, had been for 
virtually 30 years of my life. <laughs> it's a long time when you say it out loud like that, isn't it? Um, but anyway, I um, I was coming to the end of my corporate life. I didn't realise it at the time um, because I was being made redundant. There were lots of options. I could have applied for another role within the same business. I could have looked for another role outside of that organisation and gone somewhere else. But I just knew that as I did the work at the same time that all of this was going on to connect with my purpose, that actually there was something different in my future than I'd ever dreamed or imagined was possible. And that was opening my own coaching business. And it's been transformational for me. Having my purpose has allowed me to look, say, having my purpose. I always had it. I just wasn't connected to it. Now that I'm connected to it, it has a major influence on all the things that I do. And um, I talked earlier about not being able to, to separate professional and, and you know, um, business, if, sorry, professional and personal, because they can't help but be interlinked one massively affects the other. We all know that if we're going through something at home and it's really tough, it does affect our day-to-day -day at work, vice versa. If work's really tough, it can affect our behavior, our mood and so on at home. So, you know, being connected to your purpose infiltrates both of those in your life. And for me, it really has made decisions of the types of work that I do, the types of people that I connect with and those relationships that I build, they've changed massively. And it's not that I was doing a bad job of this stuff before, because we always know when something doesn't feel right, you know, the hackles go up on the back of the neck and you feel like your values are being compromised. But until I connected with my purpose, I didn't know why, I didn't know what was going on. And it's really enabled me to connect with my values um, and really understand what's important to me. So those decisions I was talking about just now that I make are made easier because if, for example, a piece of work that I might be looking at doesn't align with my values and what I'm trying to achieve in the business, then that's not a piece of work I should be taking on because it will be much, much harder work for me, um, you know, to make it work, make it successful, make it motivating for me. I hope this is making sense to you all and please do post your questions. You know, I'll be happy to, to help and support. So, what could it do for you then? If it can do all that for me and it really has changed my life, what could it do for you? There's a lot of research out there and I'll come on to a little bit of that in a minute. But I think you can safely say, as a result, you're going to be much more resilient. What do I mean by that? So, you know, I always think of a, I'm a kind of, glass half full person rather than the glass half empty. If I take that a step further and I think about my resilience, when the going gets tough, you know, I'm finding a, a tough decision or work's not going quite how I want it to or um, a relationship is tricky, again, in my personal life maybe, um, I need to pull on that resilience to help get me through that difficult time that I'm facing at that moment. If I just keep taking, it's all take, 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 and no give back, I could find myself in big trouble further down the line because at some point I'm gonna to go to take something from, from my resilience and I, I just won't have anything more in my cup to take, it's on empty, and I could end up burnt out. So having that purpose that helps guide you, that you're connected with and keeps you resilient, 
helps you to really keep on track and avoid burnout. Obviously, too much of a good thing, not, not so much. We all know life is better in moderation, so uh, a little word of caution there. Increased engagement as well. You know, by knowing your purpose, by knowing what brings you joy, by aligning with your values, means you're going to be more engaged <clears throat> in all the things that you choose to do. Remember, I used the word choose there. We all have choices in what we do. Yes, most of us do have to work, but there are choices in the type of work we choose. And the more connected we are with our purpose, the more that's going to guide us to choosing the right kind of work for us. It also helps increase satisfaction. Um, you know, the more that it's aligned again with your values, I hope you're seeing the themes coming through here, the more it's aligned with things that bring you joy, the more satisfaction you're going to get out of your work. And I help a lot of people who are kind of at a crossroads in the job that they're doing as leaders. And they're feeling dissatisfied, they're feeling undervalued, they're feeling meh. I know that's a great saying, isn't it? It covers so many things, meh. <laughs> so, you know, they're at that point. Connecting with their purpose helps them refocus. So it gives increased focus on what's coming next and where they need to direct their energy from where they are now to where they want to be and how are they going to get there. And for me, that brings me huge joy in helping somebody else go through those steps and get to where they want to be and change their lives for themselves. And of course, that increased motivation comes with it too, which is hugely important. The more motivated you are, the more likely you are to succeed in something. And that comes for the work that we do, you know, Adults spend, I think it's something ridiculous, like 70% of our lives at work, leading ourselves at work. My goodness me, boy, do we need it to be motivating, inspiring, energizing, fun, all of those great words. Um, and connecting with your purpose is going to help you get all of those things. McKinsey shared a, um, some research uh, about a year and a half ago, something like that now. And um, it really was a significant business case to persuade CEOs that uh, and their leadership teams that to become purpose-driven in an organisation and as individuals is a no-brainer to the success of the organisation. You know, from the business's perspective, we already knew that being purpose-driven um, led to greater employee engagement, but we just didn't have those stats. And I'm just gonna read a couple of stats here for you to back it up. If you're a purpose-driven individual or organization, you're 6.5 times more likely to report higher resilience. You're four times more likely to report better health. You're 2.6 times more likely to want to stay at that organization and one and a half times more likely to go above and beyond in the work that you do. They're quite compelling results, aren't they? I mean, can you afford for yourself or anyone in your business or organisation not to be purpose driven anymore? Came across uh, an author, Karen Dillon. She's a co-author of How Will You Measure Your Life? And um, she asks us to ask ourselves, what drives me? What are my values? What am I good at doing? And what contributions do I wish to make? You know, actively reminding yourself why and how you work and what that affects, or rather what effects that has on you and others, it's a good question to ask. You know, there's so many things that you can think about that you know that you love doing. Remember back to that <clears throat> team or project that you were part of a few years ago that seemed to just work and, and glide without any hiccups. I mean, yes, there's hiccups 
you know, in most projects or teams that we work in. But some of them work. like It's like magic, isn't it, when all the parts fit together and it's like a well-oiled machine. You know, this comes into the high-performing team space. But, um, you know, having your purpose can really help to make that happen. And if you're able to do that for yourself as a leader, imagine the influence and the impact that you can have on others in helping them find their purpose and what then that might mean for the team more widely. You know when something doesn't feel right. We feel it in our gut, right? And it just means we're not aligned with what we're doing in terms of our own personal values and purpose. It's amazing that even if we haven't consciously connected with our purpose, it is still there as your guiding pilot light. And what we want to do and how I can help you is to ignite that pilot light within you and make sure it always stays bright and strong within you. You know, the further you wander from your purpose, the weaker that flame gets, the more uncomfortable, the more dissatisfied, demotivated and uninspired you become. <laughs> And I was thinking about physics as I was thinking about what I might talk about today. <laughs> and that that sort of um, every action instigates an equal and opposite reaction. I think, um, you know, all of the good stuff that we are doing by connecting with our purpose and making sure that we, we do all the things that um, fulfil our cup, if you like, we think about the resilience aspect of it, the things that inspire us, the things that motivate us, the things that bring us joy. Don't go too far the other way and, um, you know, do too much, take on too much. Remembering here to look after yourself is really, really going to be very, very important. Um, you know, I can do a special on um, on leadership resilience another time perhaps to take you into uh, into a bit more detail on that. So reflecting then on the things that I've shared today around purpose, I suppose I've got some questions for you now. So think about it, what really matters to you and puts the fire in your belly in your professional life? So what are the things that you love doing that are going to help you just be the most fulfilled, purposeful you that you can be? What small contributions can you make at work that can help your leadership be more meaningful? Who do you surround yourself with that can provide support and accountability? You know, we all get surrounded by the odd mood hoover, as I love to call them. Um, people that we just don't gel with. People that, you know, we just, yeah, when we say don't gel with, we don't get on. They get our back up. We probably get their back up. You know, and it's nobody's fault. We're not for everybody. I know I'm not for everybody. And I'm okay with that. Um, I'm going to attract the right people for me. And, um, you know, they'll be the right for me and hopefully I'm right for them as well. Where we're not, it's okay to part company. And who are you actively seeking that inspires and motivates you? You know, I've got a number of people that I connect with regularly that really help give me that thought partnership, that inspiration, bouncing ideas from each other. It's, it's a great space to be in and I can highly recommend it. And how are you ensuring you're looking after your well-being amongst all this? Remember, connecting with your purpose is fantastic and it can do amazing things for you and your leadership. But don't go too far the other way. So last question for you. What are you going to do now to connect with your purpose? I've shared an awful lot today. Um, and please do go back, listen again and see what resonated with you most, because you'll hear different things that, that sort of, sort of uh, what's the word, click that light bulb on in your head 
um, and it won't necessarily be the same things that do it for me. Each one of you will have something different that you'll have heard and said, yeah, I actually can do that. That feels like something I can do and something I can take control of and actively support and benefit my leadership. So I wish you all great success on your quest to, uh, to find your purpose because it will have a huge positive impact on your leadership moving forwards the way you do things, the decisions you make, the relationships you have, how resilient you are, how accountable you are, how successful you feel, all of those things can come into it. It really is powerful stuff. And uh, I can't wait for you to get started on your purpose journey. Thanks for listening today. I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for listening to Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. Well, what a special episode that was, and I hope you've got lots of notes. Now it's your turn to uh, go away, do some reflections, see what resonates with you. Our brains are amazing things, and there'll be lots of thoughts that percolate overnight. So tomorrow morning, let's see what's changed in terms of your thoughts and what takeaways you have from today's special. I look forward to speaking with you again next week, but for now, take care.